I get asked this question a lot. Why should I learn how to code? What's the point? The, there's, I mean, like I I thought about it. I kind of want to, whatever. But what are the reasons that you should learn how to code? Well, there's many reasons. First of all, it helps you look at problems in a new way, and it helps you analyze them and solve them in a new way. That is like one of the fundamental things about coding is because the way you have to think to solve problems through computers or technology is a new way. You probably aren't familiar with how to do that. So learning to code is awesome for that. Secondly, computers magnify human potential. They bring us to the next level. Why? Because they can do things so much faster than we can. Calculation is a good example of that. So simple adding or subtracting is one form of it or even multiple multiplication or division. I mean, and also way more complicated math too. And it does it in fractions of the times that we could do it. Uh, this is also true for routine tasks like turning lights on or uh, turning lights off you know, around the world. If they were all connected, if a bunch of these lights were all connected to computers around the world, we could turn off a million lights in, in a second, where if it was us doing it by hand, you know, it'd take a really long time. Another reason is connection. Connecting to people uh, because of code is like booming right now. I mean, you look at Facebook, you look at LinkedIn, you look at Twitter. These things and many other websites provide new connections to other people that we've never had before. So learning how to use that for your own type of connection builder um, is incredible. And then testing ideas is so much easier when you know how to code because getting things online is a fundamental way to bring your project to the world because it can give you instant feedback from real customers and you can do so in a, in a short amount of time if you know how to code by testing your ideas. And the last thing, of course, building new skills. I'm a big fan of this, and I think that coding is one of those skills that if you've ever thought like, hey, maybe I should learn how to code, then do it. I mean, there's no reason that you shouldn't stop yourself from learning how to code because somebody told you, oh, you probably shouldn't do that. If you feel like you should, then do it. And I feel this way about, you know, if you want to learn how to do woodworking or if you want to learn how to do painting or, or building a drone or, you know, playing tennis or something like that, you know, go and start doing those things. I think it will help broaden your perspective on, on the world and give you a new appreciation for these skills and the skills that other people have. Now, this brings me to my financial reasons of why you should learn how to code, especially when it comes to testing projects. I kind of already went over this a little bit, but um, if you can test your project for zero dollars and maybe 30 minutes of your time, and you get a ton of feedback from, let's say, I don't know, 50 people that want to buy your whatever your project is, whether it's a, you know, a new hair care line or a new software. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It could be a real product. It could be a service. It could be a software. It could be all types of things. So testing that stuff, if you know how to do at least the basics of coding, which is like web design or something like that, you can test these projects in practically no time whatsoever. The next side is hiring decisions. How do you value a coder if you do not know what it means to code or at least know the pains and struggles of going through coding? Now, I want to give a basic little example of this hiring side. Now, voice recording. What if you had a five-minute voice recording uh, of you giving a speech or something like that and you need it transcribed? You know, how much would you spend on this transcription? Would you spend a little bit of money or a lot of money? Now, five minutes isn't that much time. It's it's really, I mean, we can all kind of understand, okay, five minutes of voice recording, you know, how long is it gonna take me to uh, listen to that? So at least there's a guaranteed of five minutes that the person will have to listen to it if they're doing transcribing for you, meaning they're taking your words and they're putting them into text. Um, okay, so at least five minutes. So let's give them at least maybe, I don't know, six times that much. So 30 minutes, you give them half an hour to do transcribing. Half an hour seems like a lot of time to just transcribe five minutes of, you know, what a language that you probably already know. So this obviously assumes that you're transcribing a language that you know, or the person who's doing it is transcribing a language that you know. Now, do we think that the average cashier would be able to do this? Like, you know, like five minutes of recording, just taking it in 
and putting it down on, on paper or typing it out. Could the average cashier do it in 30 minutes? I believe they could. But let's just say that they're really slow, they don't know how to type that well, and it takes them to an hour to do five minutes of transcribing. One hour, so 60 minutes. That's 12 times as much as how long the recording is. Now, the average cashier across the United States might make, what, 10 or $12 an hour? So that's on the high end, too. So this five minute transcription should only cost about $10, right? Now on the other side, that's, that's of course the low side of it. Now on the other side, if you wanted a super expert like transcriber and they put all the annotations of like, oh, this is when he pauses um, for you know the punchline or there's sarcasm here or something like that, that might be, let's say 10 times as much. So it might be $100, $150 for an hour's work of worth, maybe maybe $250, but that's at the most, right? So we're talking a range of $10 to maybe $250, maybe $250. Now, we can value this, and we kind of do it logically already on our own, and if somebody said, oh, I can transcribe your five minutes of work for $250, you might be like, nah, I think I'll just do it myself. Where if somebody else said to you, oh, I can do it for 15 bucks, you might be like, hey, that's pretty cool. I'll have you do it, awesome. So that's one of the key benefits of coding is learning how to code, you can start valuing these things. So again, going back to like bringing this all full circle is if you don't know how to value the code, if you don't know anything about it, you won't have an idea of what it's gonna take to make your project happen. And I think that's what is really important about learning code is because once you know how to value it or once you have a new appreciation for it, then you will know when, hey, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. He's really good. I need to bring him on my team and he wants X or she wants X. Like then you'll really kind of have a better understanding as opposed to like just looking at what market rates are or what they say that their hourly wage is or anything like that. This will really help you change the way you look at how to value that stuff. Of course, the testing side of things is maybe invaluable because in some cases you might be able to test an idea and get it done in no time and then iterate yourself and make it better yourself because you've convinced yourself, hey, now I should learn more about coding and, and put some more effort that way. So let me know if you have any questions about this, but this is kind of my you know, introduction to why you want to learn how to code. And, and um, I think it's, I think it's awesome that you're even considering it. So if you want to join, please do. Um, and uh, yeah, we can get started in lectures right now.